hopefully that's now notified everyone that the recording has started. Um, great. Okay, I'll keep letting people in if others join, but I'll I'll start now. Um, so formally welcome to this uh, last network forum session, apart from our closing session um, on general comment number 21. And um, we're talking about the implementation review that we've been doing, um, looking at the process and early insights. Um, my name's Lauren Kinnaird. I'm the Senior Programs Officer at Consortium for Street Children. So I'm the first person on the screen and we'll also be hearing from um, Yemi Aleri from Child Lifeline, who's the Programme Manager and she's based in Nigeria. So I'll present first and she'll follow. Um, if we just go to the next slide, Ellie, for the quick housekeeping part. So just to say, as with similar to lots of the other sessions, we'll have a question and answer opportunity at the end and maybe for people to share contributions if we have time. Um, feel free to use the chat box to introduce yourself, to ask any questions or to share um, any relevant content that you have that's relevant to the session. Um, if you do want to post on social media, we have a hashtag of CSC Network Forum 2023. Um, and just to remind anyone that's just joined, we are recording the session. So if you're not comfortable being on the recording, um, you can leave the session and watch the video back um, when that's published, hopefully in the next week or so. So this session will be in two halves. Firstly, I'll talk about um, General Comment 21 implementation review that we've been doing. We've been working on it for the last nine months. Don't worry, Ellie, there's not really a slide for this. That one will do. <laughs> um, so we'll be including the process that we've gone through as part of the review and the early findings. Um, as I say, we'll then hear from Yemi on how they've utilised General Comment 21 as an organisation. Um, so I'll just begin by explaining what General Comment 21 is, just in case anyone hasn't heard of it. Um, so General Comment 21, as it says on the screen, was published by the Committee on the Rights of the Child in 2017, and it provides authoritative guidance to states on developing comprehensive long-term national strategies on children in street situations, using a holistic child rights approach and addressing both prevention and response in line with the Convention of the Rights of the Child. Uh, so that's what the document is that we've been reviewing. Um, so to look at process um, on the next slide, um, we were aware that it's been five years since General Comment 21 has been published. Um, so we decided to start um, with a survey. We sent this survey out um, to network members and non-network members through um, contacts that we had to ask a series of simple questions about people's understanding and interaction with General Comment 21. So this was shared in four languages um, and the survey received 120 responses from across six different continents, which we were really pleased with as a response rate. Um, of those 120, 112 organisations said that street connected children were a priority for their organisation and 91 had heard um, of General Comment 21. So the majority of respondents did work with street connected children, but there wasn't quite so many who had heard of General Comment 21. Um, through the later stages of the survey, we decided to analyze the responses from those who had um, heard of it rather than those who hadn't. Uh, so the percentages you see kind of later on are based on those who had already heard of General Comment 21. Um, so on the next slide, you can see the breakdown of respondents by continent uh, on this chart here. So. Uh, this is the number of respondents per continent responding yes to the following questions. The first question asked was the one at the bottom, which is just, as we say, have you heard of General Comment 21? And like I said, there was 91 organization, uh, respondents sorry, who had heard of it. Um, the people answering yes is quite similar for people who have read a copy of General Comment and understand the purpose of it. But we start to see a reduction um, when we get to asking people, have they discussed General Comment 21 with other people in their organisation? Um, and that reduction increases further when we ask organisations whether they have shared um, general comment with the partners or the children that they work with um, and then even slightly further when we ask people if they've tested, implemented or advocated in line with general comment 21. I think one thing we were particularly surprised with was the high number of respondents that said that they had incorporated general comment 21 into their organisational advocacy strategy. Um, so these were the organisations that we then invited to attend focus groups. Um, if you go to the next slide please Ellie. So as we say, the survey was preliminary to find out kind of what level of engagement we could find with General Comment 21. Uh, at the point of focus groups, we split this into four different areas. Um, these were the areas that people reported being most engaged with related to General Comment 21. So they were child rights, education, family and alternative care and violence against children. 
we had very levels of attendance at these sessions. We did invite roughly 10 organizations to each of these, but had different levels of attendance. So the ones that only had two participants turned into more like semi-structured mini interviews rather than focus groups, just because there wasn't so many people there for a broader conversation. So I'll now move on to talking about the results. Um, so we asked focus group participants how General Comment 21 had helped guide their advocacy work. Uh, we were told that General Comment 21 improved advocacy planning and delivery through guiding organisations advocacy asks based on what they now understood to be children's rights as laid out in General Comment 21. Uh, inspiring the use of child rights based advocacy methods and helping organizations to understand states obligations and what they should be doing for street connected children, um, which gave them more to go off when they were then trying to advocate to those states. So advocacy successes included encouraging policymakers to make birth registration and access to ID cards more easily accessible. Uh, police and children's departments becoming more child rights focused uh, when working with street connected children and also creating awareness within communities about the issues faced uh, by street connected children through the organisations using it to speak to those communities. So on the next slide, please, Ellie. Um, we also had participants sharing some tips for using General Comment 21 in advocacy. Uh, these were to discuss the background of general comment with the organisations that you're advocating to. I think they felt it was important to first go to the communities uh, and children and discuss general comment, its background in the Convention of the Rights of the Child, including that it was developed with children. Um, and I think sharing that helped create buy-in uh, with the organisations. And similarly, it was important for those who you're advocating to to understand that General Comment 21 comes from consultations from around the world. I think there was some concern shared by organisations that it was kind of European or Western centric, but actually it was helpful to ensure that organisations understood that it was more global than that in its development. And the final thing that people shared was just to have patience. I think there was recognition that it will take time for people to understand General Comment 21. It's not a really small document. So even those who were highly motivated and active in seeking change for children still needed quite a lot of time to get to grips with General Comment 21 and how they wanted to use it in advocacy or practice. So having focused on advocacy, if I now move to thinking about how um, organisations use General Comment 21 to guide their practice, um, the following examples were shared in terms of how General Comment 21 was used. One was um, using it as a source of knowledge on how to best support children using a child rights approach rather than a welfare approach to supporting children. Uh, also to turn a kind of passion for assisting street connected children. We had people who said that they were really passionate, but they weren't quite sure how to channel that in the best way to support children. And the key principles of General Comment 21 helped them to know how to channel that. Um, Organisations used it to help them develop safeguarding policies that were inclusive of street connected children, to educate children themselves on what their rights are. Um, they also used that to, to influence language, and this was something that we had to kind of reflected on quite broadly, that General Comment 21 had had an influence in the language that people used to talk about street connected children. So this was moving away from defining children based on their current situation or circumstances, so not referring to them as street children, but actually children in street situations, or we would use street connected children often, um, so that children aren't, as I say, defined by the situations that they're in. Um, and also it inspired work to get children access to specific rights, such as identification cards, birth registration and access to education. So seeing that they were rights inspired organisations to use that in their programming and work on programmes that would achieve those. Uh, next slide, please, Ellie. Some organisations also shared examples of how they've collaborated with others around General Comment 21. These examples included training other organisations and civil society on General Comment 21 and its uses, uh, gaining local consensus around actionable steps that could be shared with policymakers to move towards a rights-based approach to working with street connected children. Uh, networks made up of multiple NGOs talked about having shared learning opportunities around General Comment 21, aiming to share learning and strengthen their collective impact. Uh, some organisations talked about printing out either full copies of General Comment 21 or key pieces of advice and recommendations from that and simply sharing that with other organisations they know that work with street connected children. And there were also organisations who developed online training programmes, IEC materials or even podcasts based on General Comment 21 and its recommendations that they were happy to share with other organisations for them to improve their understanding. 
Uh, next slide, please, Ellie. So there were also challenges faced by organisations when they were using General Comment 21, I think both in practice and for advocacy. Um, and these included a few different things. So the first one, uh, which is probably the most significantly spoken about, was acceptance by government. Um, one organisation reflected on how um, their government wasn't particularly receptive to General Comment 21 because it was introduced to them by civil society. And actually, they questioned if this is a UN document, why isn't it being passed through the kind of official channels uh, down to them? And they would be more likely to take it up if it was received in that way. So I suppose practically that's suggesting that having contacts higher up who might pass that down is maybe more likely to have it accepted than civil society trying to, to integrate a document upwards. It was also challenging for people when they worked in contexts where there's devolved power. Um, I think even in those cases where national government might be susceptible to saying, yes, we'll take on these recommendations, the practicality of those then being delivered um, in different local areas by different local authorities was, was more challenging. Um, we also had organisations talk about how governments weren't so keen to work on General Comment 21 as a key issue for them because they were more interested in uh, simply getting elected and often working with street connected children isn't a popular public issue due to the perceptions of those children. So it wasn't popular for them to be working in a way that supports those children's rights and therefore they weren't they weren't interested in looking at the recommendations. People also talked about accessibility and this was particularly around language. Uh, General Comment 21 is published in multiple languages, but not every language, of course, and not local languages, which made it really difficult for some organisations to be able to use it. Um, I think also the technical language used within there was difficult for some organisations, even if they were able to translate it. Um, I've just seen a question come up about is it in Urdu and I'm not 100% sure, but I will check once I've finished speaking and then let you know. Um, Organisations also spoke about limited resources, um, which, of course, is something that all organisations face. They need the resource to be able to, to do the programmes in practice uh, or to be able to advocate. So that was a key issue that I'm sure we'd all expect to come up in terms of delivering this. Uh, and also just slow progress. I think similarly to, to before, even when organisations are successful in advocacy, it takes a long time for that to then get put into practice. Um, the final limitation that was spoken about was how General Comment 21 is obviously it's a document aimed at changing policy, not practice. Um, and whilst it has surprisingly been useful for lots of organisations in practice, that's not its main aim. So it would be really good to be able to have that kind of translated into something that's more useful for people who are designing programmes um, rather than it just being the policy tool. Uh, so next slide, my final one there, Ellie. Um, so talking about the next steps of, of how we want to use this within our evaluation. So like I say, we've done the survey, we've done the focus groups uh, and we've done some initial analysis to get what I've just presented to you. Um, but we're going to be continuing to finalise a written report through drawing out answers to our core research questions. Um, we're going to complete a few kind of key case studies on countries where we know that General Comment 21 has been used. Um, and then once we've written all that up, we will share the report with the network. And we hope for, that there will be some really practical things in there. Um, I've obviously spoken very top line about the general trends that came out, but we've got some really great examples from the organisations who came to the focus group and they're kind of specifically named. Um, so hopefully that will be helpful practically once we're able to share that with the network. Um, so that's our next steps. We'll take any questions at the end of both of the presentations. Um, so that's you can finish hearing from me at this point and I'll hand over to Yemi. Um, so Yemi is programmes manager at Child Lifeline in Lagos in Nigeria. Uh, she attended one of our focus groups and told us all about their fantastic work and how they've used General Comment 21. So it felt really important to be able to share um, her insights with you and kind of from a practical perspective, how they've used General Comment 21. Uh, so over to you, Yemi. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, how are we presenting while we used General Comment 21 in Child Lifeline? We were fortunate to be part of the resource pack uh, training uh, that uh, consortium did in 2021. And immediately after the training, we went into action. Can I have the next slide, please? Introduction. So General Comment 21 provides all stakeholders, including street connected children, with, with a way of understanding how the rights in the Confession of the Rights of the Children. 
it ensures that the right of street connected children can be easily identified and that the children themselves can hold government responsible to address the shortfalls. So one thing we did in Child Lifeline was to prepare our children to make them to be part of the advocacy to the government in Nigeria. The team did a kind of step down training to the children in which the children were taught the importance of advocating for their rights because they are part and parcel of the program and the, we, we made them to know that is their rights for them to be explicit and explain during the training, such as right to identity, access to education, participation, protection, and so on. Next slide. So I will start with the experience in Nigeria. In Nigeria, birth identity certificate is part of the requirement for children to be enrolled in school. And it is given to all applicants without discrimination. But in Child Lifeline, it is part of our policy to get birth certificates for all beneficiaries as an organization. We've been able to facilitate the collection of several birth certificates from National Population Commission. However, this does not come with ease. It's not something you can just assess for the category of children we are dealing with because of the tag, because of the label of street connected children. Let's have a look at it. In Nigeria, uh, next slide is. Obtaining birth certificate for the children is not an easy task, like I said. Majority of the beneficiaries in our program, we, call, we had a program in Uru, uh, that, called, that we called the World Back to School Projects. Majority of them had no birth identity. And by the time we were to place these children back to school, we realized that without the birth certificate, they will not be registered in school. Though it's a fundamental human right under Child Rights Act law and a document that is a kind of basic requirement for school placement. But this category of children does not have this BAT certificate or BAT identity. So what did we do in Child Lifeline? We collaborated with National Population Commission to provide this BAT identity for these children at gratis. But it should be noted, like I said, it's not something that we were able to get with ease. It took a lot of process, a lot of advocacy, a lot of talk, a lot of pressure. In fact, it wasn't an easy task for Child Lifeline to be able to get this document for the children, for street connected children, and for them to be able to register then. Next slide. Then what did we do? We went to advocacy program. Like I said, that we stepped down the training after we, uh, we, we had training with consortium for street children on resource park training, this training was stepped down to the children in our center. And you can see from the picture here, child, part uh, in, uh, child participation is one of the core principles of UN Convention of the Rights of the Child and has become the art of our work as Child Lifeline in our work with street connected children. After the step down training, training, the children were guided to carry out an advocacy visit to Lagos State Child Protection Network, where they presented issues bordering on the rights of children. And before then, we wrote letters to stakeholders, such as State House of Assembly, such as uh, even the governor, we wrote letters, National Population Commission, the agency that used to issue out the birth identity. Then we wrote to Koshofe local government, because by the time they bring it down, you have to go to the local government to obtain the document. But all these things are not something that you can just go in and collect on behalf of street connected children. So we went through so many processes before we could be able to get it for these children. Next slide, please. Advocacy to the National Population Commission. This is the real process that we, we had. Initially, we went to National Population Commission presenting this children issue, oh, it's a right, we're supposed to collect it for them. But with, uh, we, we wrote letters, we did all these things, requesting the document, stating clearly it's a fundamental human right They're under the Child Rights Act law and Article 7 of UN Convention of the Rights of the Children. Then we were following up. But we found out that despite all these things, it wasn't coming out. The birth identity, registration was not really done for this category of children. Then 
they invited us for meetings in which we enlightened them, the team from National Population Commission. That is a right. We kept on repeating ourselves after a series of meetings and discussions where we stood our ground because it is supposed to be a free legal document. But lo and behold, my country, they said we have to pay some amount of money, which we put our feet down. That is supposed to be a free legal document for the children. The timeline, the, the, uh, there was delayed, there were so many things. But after so much follow up with the co uh, Population Commission and enlightenment to make them to know that we know that these things should be given to the children free of charge. They wrote to us and they said, we have to present the children and the parents that as an organization, we cannot collect this bad identity for the children for about 30, 40 children at a go. So we were going in bashes. We will go like maybe four or five children, child life plan will send representative, the parents, we made arrangements for vehicles to take the parents and the children down to National Population Commission. And at the end of the day, the birth identity was issued, that legal document was issued to all the children that we presented without paying a dime through advocacy. Though it wasn't an easy task, we were delayed. The children registration to school were delayed and but at the end of the day, we were able to get it. Next slide. slide. Uh, and with this document, the children under us, we, they were able to gain access to education. 100 vulnerable children who had either been out of school, have never been to school, were enrolled back to school within Oro community in Lagos State. We operate remedial classes for all the children. We teach an average of 15 children at our dropping center. We have a dropping center in Bagada. They come on daily basis from the streets. We have the street connected children coming to the center on daily basis. And what do we do with them? We try to educate them. Street is not the best place for a child to grow. Where are you from? We go into home tracing. We go into counseling. We go into several things with them for them to know that it is their right to be educated. And we make them to know that. If you want to be educated, you cannot be educated while on the street. So this will make these children to think otherwise and are set to go to a, rehab we have a rehabilitation center that where we rehabilitate them and place them back to school. Apart from the or back to school project, presently as I'm talking, we have 13 children in our rehabilitation home. And we have average of 15 children in our dropping center that do come in to enjoy our counseling, to enjoy our services in teaching them normal basic literacy and numeracy classes. That is what we do in Child Lifeline to give access to education. Next slide, please. Mm -hmm. Then school placement for the beneficiaries. How did we do it in Child Lifeline? In Child Lifeline, when we secure this legal document, I mean the birth identity, there's another document they requested for, they call it LASRA, Lagos State Resident Registration for all the children concerned. We have to collaborate with the state universal basic education through advocacy in telling them, because some of these parents don't even have this resident res registration. They did not know the importance. And most of them are not even living in a normal resident. They use just plans to build a kind of small, small houses for themselves. So the collaboration with Suburb, the Universal Basic Education Board, State Universal Basic Education Board, brought about a kind of waiver in that area. And there's another fee that we are meant to pay by the time we are registering the children, parents are meant to pay. We collaborated with Suburb through advocacy. We follow up on the list. And to my dismay then, it was done without paying a dime. And the government cooperated with us. They placed back to school 100 children. I give it to Lagos State government because this was done. Though initially it wasn't an easy thing, but to, during a uh, true advocacy, we made them to know that it's the right of the children to be educated, it's the right of the children to, to have that identity. And having achieved the school registration document, all the beneficiaries were 
presented for placement and they were placed back to school. You can see these are our beneficiaries from the photo on the slide. And the, we, the, the, the class teacher is attending to them. 100 children were placed in different schools within that local government in Lagos State. Next slide, please. Child protection. I just want to talk briefly about this. Thank God for that resource pack training. All staff at Child Lifeline are committed to a child safeguarding principle in collaboration with uh, consortium and Lagos State. And we ensure a safe space for all our children and our activities. Next slide. Thank you. Thank you so much, Yemi. That was brilliant to hear such a practical a practical response to, to how you've used General Comment 21 as a starting point as to be able to lead on to all of that other work. Um, I think it's so impressive that you've managed to get all those ID cards for free and through just persistence, and particularly given that that was such participatory advocacy from the children. Um, it's really wonderful to hear. So thank you for presenting, Yemi. Thank um, you. Ellie, if you skip to the next slide, it's just a, it's quite general, but to see if anyone has any questions for myself about the review or for Yemi, um, maybe if we do that first, and then if we are able to answer those, um, then we'll be able to go to questions. Um, I know there's something in the chat already, which yeah, you've said you'd be able to speak to. Um, I'll, I'll read the question for the group, um, which is a question asking whether we'd be able to share any more about how the Consortium for Street Children has used general comment ourselves in, in our own advocacy work. Um, and also whether we tend to investigate through the network internationally about other general comments that have been published um, and their use. Pia, are you happy to speak to that? Yeah, no, thank you. That's a really great question, Louise. And maybe maybe just to share, which, which may not have been clear from what, what Lauren said, that when we set out, I mean, I, I think, you know, I think Samad speaks for us all when he says we want to see action, not theory. And, and that was abs absolutely the spirit in which we said, well, it's five years since the UN put out this guidance. What have we learned from it? It's been a difficult five, six years. It was five years when we started doing it. It's been a difficult time. There's been pandemic. There's been economic challenges. There's been lots of, I think, stepping back from um, human, international human rights commitments. But still, a lot of work was put into bringing that general comment together. And most importantly, Informally, there was cons consultation with, I think, 300 plus children, but informally, actually over a thousand children engaged their views in that general comment. And we owe it to those kids to say, and what's happened since then. Um, and the bit that Lauren shared with us was a real focus on, we know that part of how guidance from the UN can bring about change is because civil society organizations use it as a lever for change. Um, but it's also actually about work directly with governments and seeing what governments have done. And we know, I mean, again, referring back to previous sessions on general comment, we've heard from a couple of governments step forward quite early on, particularly government of Uruguay, who said, we want to be a model country and have a national plan based on general comment 21. The Philippines has also seen national planning based on general comment 21, very much spearheaded by a network of civil society organizations um, and then we have other countries like Serbia who've done national plans and have talked about it in their reporting to the UN. So we know that there has been government action, but today's session and what Lauren has really shared with us today was actually focused on how civil society organisations have used it as part of their armoury for trying to bring about change in children's lives. Um, and, uh, and in terms of how we've used it, in our own in our own advocacy, it's absolutely so. We do respond to um, both supporting network members who may be working with um, their own government and who are asking for support and advice on how to frame things. Um, but then we also sometimes, where there's a call for um, uh, input on a particular issue which is being looked at by the UN and it's looking at it with nation states. Um, we've brought together input from members of the network, and often that does get somewhat framed using General Comment 21 because it was authoritative guidance. So it's very much shaped, in, in a sense, the way we've also framed things. Um, and you asked a really qu interesting question, Louise, which is, well, okay, so 
Um, what have we learned from other general comments? And I, I was asking myself the same question. I managed to um, get an hour with the Committee on the Rights of the Child in between their review of uh, the Turkey as a state party reporting on their implementation of the convention um, and the UK. So I so we had a little session on general comment 21 that was sandwiched between two country reviews. Um, and uh, some of the things we'll share as part of our bigger report on, on this review that Lauren's talked about, we'll share what was said, um, what some of the feedback on that. But I thought one of the things that really, well, two things really stood out for me. The first was that the members of the Committee on the Rights of the Child saw General Comment 21 as having set a new approach to the importance of actually listening to what children see as the key issues, not necessarily relying on children to do all the advocacy themselves, that's not fair or right, but actually hearing their perspective of the causes and consequences of being street connected. I listened to a lovely, um, a, a very impressive young woman from Nigeria, Yemi, so from your country, who uh, who set, used a brilliant expression, which was, um, she said, that's the person wearing the shoe who knows where it pinches most. Um, and um, and her, what she was trying to say was that, you know, children, children, listen to children about where the shoe pinches, and maybe that'll help you figure out what footwear they need to have metaphorically. Um, and, and I think that was a real part of the approach of General Comment 21, which we encouraged and worked on with so many of our network members to actually hear directly from children, which led into a lot of the focus areas, et cetera. And the committee said, surprisingly, given how important part child participation and hearing from children is in the Convention of the Rights of the Child, they said that it was the first time this had been so central to a general comment and that it has set a new bar for following general comments, that actually we should actually be hearing from children and um, engaging them in the process. So that was one, one of my really big takeaways. Um, I think the other thing which I thought was really, um, I was very surprised by, is that I don't think a lot of work has been done on, okay, a general comment, you know, a lot of people have put a lot of time and effort into a whole series of general comments on a range of issues, whether it's on climate justice or on uh, youth justice, but so what do we know about what makes those general comments actually get traction, bring about change? And what we were surprised at how little research there is on this. And the committee confirmed that and said there's not actually a very formal process of follow up. They are a group of 18 volunteers. They're not um, they don't have a big uh, organizational infrastructure by them. So they, to some extent, rely on civil society doing follow up. Um, but they recognise that more work needs to be done to support actually national governments. And that was one of the reasons why they were so keen for us to do this. You know, that it's no good just setting out a whole lot of guidance and then just sort of expecting magically for people, first of all, to know that you've had the guidance <laughs> coming out and then to implement it. And I can think of members of this network, both on General Comment 21, but actually on other UN guidance who work their, you know, socks off, to use a UK expression, who work really, really hard to say, actually, there is this guidance. How do we translate it into our own context and look at it against existing commitments that are often in national law as well as international law? So we were really encouraged by the committee to continue this dialogue. They are very keen for us to now, in the, you know, as we move forward going into 2024 and certainly our next five-year plan to say, how can we work more at a regional level to bring this back up with people within government? There are good, there are always good champions, uh, child rights champions in government to try to help continue to shine a spotlight on the recommendations, which were not picked out of the air. They came out of a lot of work, hard work and consultation. Louise, do come on camera. And I hope that helps answer your question a little bit. And I hope, I hope you feel, you know, that all the work that you you and others put in to trying to make this happen has 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 led to some real world um, change. Hi, Pia. Sorry, I'm I'm not sure if I put my camera on or if anyone can see me. Hi, Louise. Can hear me. <laughs> Hi. Thank you, Pia, for that. And hello, everyone. Um, it's really really nice to be here with you all. Um, 
I just want to say that it's it's been so important for me to take part in this uh, this conversation with you about government um, because it was um, quite a few years of my life that I uh, worked on lobbying the UN and governments to to actually agree to draft the general comment. So this five years later, it's it's really good to hear that CSC has taken up the mantle of of creating this in detail review with with the actual network and so on. Um, so I guess just to sort of add to what Pia's already mentioned, um, and I was actually typing this in the chat, but I guess my further comment would also be that in the international network that CSE has, there is a large um, knowledge, you know, there, there's large knowledge in organizations also working at UN level, um, UNICEF, say the children, World Vision, Terre de Homes, et cetera. And they also have their own networks themselves. They're also used to lobbying and using general comments. And while there is no official process for uh, following up on and understanding the implementation and what the success of implementing general comments look like, there is a lot of knowledge in these organizations to be had about what's worked, but also what's not worked. And a lot of this won't be official information, but it's definitely still out there. And I would love to see CSC also engaging with these other large uh, organizations to, to understand what's worked and what's not worked, in addition to talking to the UN comment, a committee on the rights of the child. Um, and then the final sort of comment is, and I think this is moving forward from 2024, is thinking about how CSC can become more proactive and perhaps less, less or at least in addition to being reactive to how to use the general comment at the international level. So that was the sense I was getting that there's a lot of using the general comment in a reactive mode, responding to consultations, responding to other reports, et cetera, but actually how to sort of really think about using the general comment proactively, um, I think uh, would be really important. And I'd love to hear more about it if you have some examples. But other than that, thank you to the network for um, engaging with and using the general comments. Um, and thank you to CSE for continuing to sort of really push the general comment and the importance of it um, in the work that we do to, to support street children around the world. Thank you. Thanks, Louise. Really helpful. And yes, I think absolutely on the kind of proactive use um, agreed. And, and it, it certainly has framed um, some of the work that we've been doing um, supporting network members nationally. So very much so. And has framed indeed kind of some, some of the conversations that we've been having around International Day for Street Children, uh, the Network Forum. Thanks, Pia. I, I, I'll, I'll come off camera unless you need me to jump back in, Lauren. Sure, no problem. And Yemi, can I just say thank you for a great presentation? I love the way you've taken that and just really thank used it. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Great. I just wanted to, to pick up on another question we've had in the chat. Now, I certainly can't respond to all countries, but we did have a question um, specifically about Pakistan. And we have actually had two organisations from Pakistan involved uh, in the focus group. So I can share a couple of insights, but that's not the case for all countries. So please don't don't test me. Um, but we do have, like I say, two organisations, part of the focus groups um, who shared how they've been using General Comment 21 uh, in Pakistan. We had one organisation um, share that they've been doing work with other civil society organisations, training them on General Comment 21. Uh, and with that group, they've gained consensus around actionable steps that they want to share with policymakers. Um, I think that's still very much in progress, but they're also uh, in touch with the National Commission on the Rights of the Child and aiming to create a policy brief grounded in General Comment 21, um, specifically applicable to education and protection for street connected children in Pakistan. Um, and another separate organisation uh, also talked about using General Comment 21 to advocate to the government. Uh, and they showed that there have been multiple committees uh, created, federal and provincial level. I, I'm not sure how much work they've been able to do yet, but those committees um, have been created as far as what they've reported. So um, just to share that there were two, two really, really active participants in Pakistan who were able to share with us. Um, moving on, um, I can see that Kelvin has shared something in the chat. Bear with me, I haven't actually been able to, to read it through yet. Kelvin, I don't know if you want to, to speak to your comment or whether you'd like me to read it out. No? 
be lovely if Kelvin wanted to speak to it. Perfect, Kelvin. Yeah. Feel, feel free to share. Thank you for your comment. Yes, thank you. Thanks a lot for for the foundation in Kenya. General comment and run has really impacted our work in, in Bungoma County, where we presented our advocacy letter during the International Day for Street Children. We presented the, the letter to, to the children department, and the, the department were really uh, surprised because they never knew there is any day that is celebrated for street children. So we are the first organization to introduce the letter to the children department, and they are really happy about it. So we addressed in the letter, they, it addressed many issues of which they were really positive about it. They gave us the response, and they did change the impact because which, you know, most of the street children were used to be used to be came They were never given that uh, chance to be on the street. They were not allowed. They were treated like thugs. But um, later, we sat down with the children department and the police department and they talk to them about their issue because currently we don't have a rehab center or we don't have any rehabilitation center but the organization that they are supporting street children they are limited they can only access maybe around 50 and that for children so others still roam on the street and they were not given peace at all so we encourage the government to find the issues and we also have a police desk where they can handle the issues of the kids where kids can go and represent their case and when child is in conflict can also be corrected. So for us, we really believe they requested that we can incur more, we can more collaborate and work more with the county government and see how we can train the police officers and the other children department officers on how they can handle the issue of the street children and even they encourage or even encourage if you can train more other organizations can collaborate, work together and see how we can impact the life of street children in Bungoma County. It has really changed our perception and it, it is really working. God willing next year, we are praying if we can be in position, we can also do the training because this year we didn't manage because of the lack of enough resources. But we believe we can do more with the kids and the children department and other organizations to see the implementation of general comment one, of which we haven't printed the the general comment one and presented the office department, but we will implement it as we launch up to our organ our offices in Goma. We'll print out and share with them so that they can also be in action. Thank you. And I really appreciate Consortium for Stitching for the support you have given us in terms of recommendation. It has really impacted and changed our work and makes our work easier in Bungoma County. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Kelvin. And thank you for your inputs earlier as well into the report. I know some of what you've shared we've, we've written into the report. So uh, thank you. And I think it's really important to recognise and also good to hear that in contrast to some of the challenges the other organisations faced in civil society pre presenting General Comment 21 upwards to government, that actually when you tried that yourself, they were really receptive um, and maybe wouldn't have heard of it if it wasn't presented by civil society. So it's really good to hear that and that that's expanded into other work with the police uh, and other other organizations so hopefully that can act as inspiration for others it's really fantastic to hear Kelvin um I haven't seen I don't think any other questions come up in the chat feel free to just come on camera and ask questions if you have any as well um I don't know if anyone has any practical questions for Yemi on how her work um worked when she was using general comment 21 or anything more broadly or if anyone um would like to share their own experiences of using general comment 21 um, open to either. I'll pause for a moment in case anyone wants to raise a hand or type a question. Oh, Pia, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to say that that for organisations who are interested in in building on the kind of work that's been done by other network members, we do have a film about to how to. Uh, civil society networks, as I said, in Uruguay and Philippines, use general comment just to bring people together nationally on, on policy and working with uh, children in street situations, um, but also how, how they developed a national plan, which was accepted by the government. We have child-friendly versions of general comment. We have it in quite a few languages. We need to double check that we don't have it in Urdu, um, but we have it in quite a lot of languages and child-friendly versions um, and we have potentially other support. So if there are organizations who come out of this call and say, gosh, I'd like to actually take this and use it more practically, 
um, please reach out to us. That's why we've developed those tools and resources really to, to provide um, uh, ways for, for tools for members of the network to actually, I mean, what we want is to turn this into practice and to do exactly what Yemi's done, which is actually using it to make sure that children can access those rights. So uh, very happy to do that. Thank you, Pia. And I think uh, we do have the child-friendly version in lots more languages than the actual general comment is published in, I believe, from what I've looked at on the website. Um, so, yeah, we can certainly share the links to those. Uh, Sagar, did you want to come on and ask a question? Yeah, hi. I actually don't have a question. I just have a, I mean, a success story kind of thing sure. to share. Sure. Uh, yeah, first of all, hi, I am so sorry. I couldn't be so active in this year's network workshop. I've always been so active. So I'm from Red Dreams Weavers. Uh, so to be very honest, I've started my organization in 2018 and it is only because of you and general comment number 21 when I read it in 2000, I guess, 18 July, uh, because this, you know, uh, situations of children in my own city was very problematic and I, I couldn't, it was a time I, you know, it was difficult for me to take any actions when, but when I read this, uh, consortium, I mean, uh, the general comment. That's where I decided, okay, that this is a possibility to you know, implement something which is sustainable on ground. At least, you know, uh, even in UN, people are recognizing that. And uh, back then, I made some curriculums. You know, uh, we have this uh, mentorship model where we, you know, uh, like it, it's around street work, which is highly, highly focused on 20, I mean, general government. Uh, and uh, in 2023, like in... August last to last month, we successfully collaborated with Indian government and we are starting a national fellowship in India, which is again highly uh, focused on general government. So this fellowship is going to work with all the children who live uh, around tracks, like uh, railway tracks in India. So it's going to go to Bharat Railway their fellowship and we just uh, ended up signing a MOU with government. Yeah, So that's one of the impact stories. Fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's really brilliant. I'd love to hear more about it. Um, it's not something I, I knew you were working on, so that's really brilliant to, to have uh, shared into the conversation. Cool. Pardon me, I don't know if you're trying to contribute or if you've just come off the email. No? <laughs> We'll see. But thank you for that um, information from Rag Dream Weavers. That's really, really helpful uh, and great inspiration again for how it can be um, put into practice. Um, anyone else with any questions or contributions? We've got a few more minutes if people do want to. No? no? Okay. Uh, well, in that case... What was someone else speaking? Louise, sorry, I was just sorry, typing. Louise, go ahead. Okay, sorry, I was just typing, but I'll just ask instead. I just if if anyone from the network um would like to share a little bit more about how they think that as a network, i.e. listening to others' um experiences of using the general comment and also with what CSC is doing what in their opinion will be the next steps to support the implementation of the general comment at their national level that something concrete some ideas of some something concrete about what would help them either if they're starting out and they would like to do it or like yemi where you know you've already used the general comment what can what is i guess what is the need um and what would be something concrete to do to sort of help with implementation i'm curious if anyone would like to to share a little bit more about that thank you thanks louise so anyone want to share any thoughts on concrete next steps of how we could get uh general comment used more i suppose even in the first place or more consistently in your countries um I don't know, Yemi, if you have any thoughts on that um, before anyone else shares. I think the first thing one should do is to adapt this general comment um, 21 to your local environment. That was what we did in Child Lifeline, because what works for Nigeria may not work for another country. So the first thing is adaptation to your local environment. Look at what is missing, 
where government is not responsible for these street connected children. That was the first thing I did with my team after the training with consortium. Then the modules, the training modules, we try to bring it down to our local level so that we will understand. After that, uh, after that one, then the next thing we did was to arrange for a kind of two hours, one hour program with the children. That's the step-by-step -step we did. And we were, you know, digesting the modules with the children. It's not, thank God that they said they have now brought it to the level the children we understand. But as at that time, we have to digest it with them and make them to understand their rights, that this is your right. You know, child participation matters a lot they were made to know that it is their right. And they were made to know that we are going out. We are going out to meet the people in authority. This is how you should ask for your rights. And we had that training for like about three, four months before we now start writing advocacy letter. Then after the letters, they invited us. And the first place our children visited, and that was the first picture you can see on my presentation was Lagos State Child Protection Network. Then before we went to National Population Commission, we went into the uh, local government, we went into National Assembly and the rest like that. It wasn't an easy task, but with a good team, with your determination, you'll be able to achieve something. Because if you are looking at it from the angle of, oh, what the United Nations says. You may not be able to bring it down to your local level, but look at the contents of General Comment 21. How does it apply to the work you're doing? And how can you use it to benefit the children under your network? Thank you. Thank you, Yemi. It's been good advice in terms of contextualizing before you try to use something as with a broad sweep. I think that's really good advice. I would like to add something. Oh, Sorry, no problem. Yeah, I've been connected with uh, CSC since 2020, April or May, when the pandemic was at the peak all across the world. And I've never seen that the CSC's uh, policy is towards the implementation. It is all about theoretical theory. Okay, I know the theory. It is available on the internet. It is available on the UN websites. It is available on numerous websites. So where is the implementation? You are just talking about Africa, 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 Africa. What about Asia? What about South Asia? Thank, I, thank have you a so much. From, I have a friend from India. Okay. So, so where is South Asia? Why should I attend your uh, CSC forum? So, th thank you I so don't much. Have any time. I'm, I, I'm using my internet. I'm using my electricity. I'm just talking about Africa, Africa, Africa. Okay. Thank you. There might be so many so issues much. in thank Africa, you. but what about South Asia? Thank when you I've so been much. listening to so many, I, I've been listening to so many presentations from Africa. What about Asia? What about uh, South Asia? You are just okay. wasting thank my time. Thank you so much. Um, I think it would be important to reflect on the fact that we've had contributions today, wonderful contributions from organizations uh, in India, and we've shared about Pakistan, uh, but we take your feedback on board, but it, it would be useful to have more organizations uh, from Asia and other continents. Thank you for sharing that. Um, does anyone else have any, any final question or contribution? We've got a couple more minutes and then we'll, um, then we'll close the session. No problem. Yeah, I can just, maybe I can just round up by saying um, it, it, I, I realise that sometimes things, you know, it's very difficult when we're trying to engage with a network of very diverse countries and very diverse organisations to make sure it's relevant. I'm very sorry if it hasn't felt relevant to you, Samad. We've in the past when we've done work uh, sessions on General Comment 21, it's actually been from Latin America and East Asia because we were doing a lot of work with those two pioneer countries who, who stepped forward uh, in terms of national plans and trying to put things into practice and into actually budgets and activities from government departments. Um, in South Asia, we've done some amazing work with Grand Bangla, 
who haven't been able to join us over the last few days, but who did, did a lot of work both in Dakar as well as in Barisal, which was using General Comment 21 as a bit of a springboard, a little bit like Yemi has, to say where is the gaps between what's promised in General Comment 21, what's in the National Children's Act, which I think is 2013 in Bangladesh, and what's actually happening for children. And like Yemi, they've done a lot of work on identity, um, uh, members of the network, but actually also done a lot of work with the police, which picks up on some of Kelvin's points um, and had identified that children focal points was mandated in the Bangladesh law um, and is something that's talked about in general comment 21, but wasn't being put into practice. And so we worked with them to both do a survey where these things emerged, but also actually to put it into practice and to make sure that there were children's focal points. So it's true, we don't always manage across all 200 members to be able to translate everything into practice individually. We're quite a small team, but the intent is to do that. And, um, and uh, we're very sorry if for some people it hasn't felt relevant to what they're doing, but I've really found this session useful and I've loved listening to what you've shared, Yemi. So thank you. Um, and very open. I saw there was a question from Comfort. Thank saying, you too. Bye. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Yemi. And uh, from Comfort, yeah, we'll pick up with you um, on your question about tools. I know that Harry, who's working on our advocacy, will follow up with you on that and see how we can support you. Um, and Kelvin, we're really interested. There was a big interest from East Africa on working with the police and our activities that take with training. So I hope we can maybe sweep you into that group, Kelvin, of folks in, in East Africa who are doing training with the police, both in Tanzania and also in Kenya. Wonderful. One, I will highly appreciate Pia. Yeah. That's brilliant, Kelvin. I, I look for Paul, I can see you've come on camera, which suggests you want to add something, which would be great. Maybe something from Ghana before we close. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. I have been joining remotely and the sessions have been very, very useful. And I have also listened to so many workshops from different parts. And I think CSC is doing great work to diversify and make all of us give our inputs. Uh, yeah, I can I can imagine sometimes people feel a lot more needs to be done, but it's a global world. I mean, you can only do as much as you can do. And and thanks to CSC Network for the amazing work you're doing. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Paul, that was very kind of you to say. Uh, and yeah, of course, we're always, all, always striving to do as much as we can uh, and reach as many organizations um, to make the best, best impact we can. Um, thank you so much to everyone, particularly thank you, Yemi. Uh, it was fantastic to hear. Thank you, you Laurie. Real, really practical example. Um, so yeah, that, that's fantastic. And we have one more session, um, which is just our closing session where we'll hear from Pia. You have to forgive me. I can't remember what time it is. Pia, can you remind me how, how much longer? It's either half an hour or an hour from now. Can somebody remind me? I've got it on a slide somewhere. Uh, yeah, it's at 2 p.m. Yeah. Thank you, Ellie. Uh, so at 2 p.m. GMT, so that's in 30 minutes from now, uh, we have one final closing session where we'll hear from Pia. Um, so thank you all for your time uh, for coming to this session and others. We really appreciate it and hope to, to see you one final time before we end the Network Forum for the year. Um, so thank you, everyone. Um, hope to be in touch with you all soon.